All right, everybody, we are live again. Dinah Samir, Search for Huru. And we are doing a follow-up or part two to our show yesterday, which was financing strategies in available markets for inter-African trade and development. This is the part two. And once again, we have our special guest, Miss Renata Jones, on with us today. Uh, Renata, go ahead and, and, and take it away. Oh, you know what? Where do we leave off? I know yesterday we left off on the Congo, kind of. And then we yeah, left I, off on your um, your inventions. Oh, yeah, I don't want to talk about that. Today. Okay, you don't have to. Okay. No. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are we, actually, yeah, that's actually a great place to start. All right, go ahead. Okay, yeah. So, okay, so yesterday we were talking about um, one of the latest, uh, well, well, okay, let me explain what an invention is, okay? Because some people have a kind of warped idea of what inventions are. Inventions are, there are two categories of inventions from what I know. One is something that is absolutely original, has not been done, and it's the first to be created, right? Mm -hmm. The second one is an improvement upon something that's existing, okay? So let's say, you know, you improve upon a car or you improve upon a train or you improve upon a pen. It's considered an invention as well. Um, the other thing is that um, someone mentioned in the chat room, I was trying to look at um, some of the questions last night. Um, someone mentioned in the chat room, oh, she, she invented Carnival. No, I did not invent Carnival. Okay. What I'm saying is there are different strategies to deploy a Carnival. And when I was looking at the American market, because Black Americans have a profound gift I mean, all black people everywhere, because I've traveled to a couple of countries. They have a profound musical gift and a very profound artistic, um, they have very profound artistic talent. And when I was doing some research, I'm not an expert, doing some research on African-American or black history, I, um, you know, and, and their inventions, I said, you know, a carnival for black Americans would be a great way for them to remember their history and tell their story. Because when the Africans, I'll tell you a little bit of history about uh, Carnival, how it came to the Americans. Okay. Now, the word Carnevale is a Latin word, okay? Um, a Latin word that was derived from Catholicism. And the meaning of the word means farewell to the flesh, Okay. Um, one of the biggest carnivals in Europe is actually the Venetian carnival, right? Unfortunately okay. for our ancestors in the Americas, um, we were not allowed to practice masquerade, okay? And masquerade is part of the European uh, Venetian carnival called Mascara, okay? But right. the origins of masquerade actually goes back even further. And Dynasty would know because what's sitting right next to you is a mask. Right. Right? So when Carnival came to the Americas, okay, the two biggest places that it, it, it landed was one, Brazil, and two, Trinidad, right? And mm -hmm. both, both actually began their Carnival around the same time, which is about two, three hundred years ago. OK, uh, I'll tell you more about Trinidad, Trinidad's Carnival. Uh, Trinidad's Carnival was basically because they were not allowed to practice the African masquerade. OK, and the drums were banned. Uh, they would go into the slave master's house, the slave master's quarters, steal their expensive attire when they weren't there, when they went off for Carnival. And they would be they would incorporate their African masquerade, but in the slave master's clothing because they were not allowed to practice it with their traditional clothing. Right. And their traditional masquerade. You've been to the gone country and you know that the gone um, have different sorts of masks for different reasons. Right, Dinas? Right. Right. OK, so this is part of where we get um, the, the concept of the masquerade. But for an African person, the origins of masquerade is much older than Europe. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. But in Europe, we get the mascara from the Venetian. We also know historically that there were black Venetians. You know, uh, Shakespeare wrote about this. And some say that um, 
uh, we know Othello was a, a, a black, uh, was black, but he also right. wrote about many, many of the, um, I forgot what they're called, they're called Moors, Moors, the Moors in Europe who were black, right? Right. Um, and some of that tradition, some of that mascara, masquerade tradition, I believe had, it, had its origins coming out of West Africa and Southern Africa going up into Europe. That's what I think, but I can't really, you know, find the historical um, documents to support it. So I, this is just my opinion. So let's go back to the Trinidad Carnival. What makes it Trinidad and Brazil's Carnival? And I'm not an expert expert on Brazil's Carnival, but I can give you a, a timeline of why it's important to Black people that we celebrate. Either we call it a masquerade or we call it the Latin root, a carnevale. For in okay. both countries, it takes place before Lent. So you see the Catholic. I'm not Christian, nor am I Muslim, nor do I practice any of these Abrahamic religions. I celebrate Carnival um, in a way that our ancestors celebrated, which is deeply, deeply um, rooted in, um, in, 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 in the African arts and stuff like that. Anyway, so back to Brazil and uh, Trinidad. In Trinidad, um, when, the, when the, the former slaves began to celebrate Carnival, they took Carnival and, and really, both in Brazil and Trinidad, they took Carnival and they made it into what it is today. This oh, wow. is why, yeah, this is why at the time in both countries, the white slave masters, when they began, you know, you know, black people, when we take anything, you know, we can make like, you know, jollof rice out of anything, right. you know, so, or pilau, as we say, you know. So mm -hmm. when the slaves began to really shape Carnival into what it is today. Um, the slave masters were like, oh, no, these black people getting together. Oh, no, let's crack down. In Trinidad, they actually fought for Carnival, right? Mm -hmm. And Carnival in Trinidad, the music that goes with it was at the time was Calypso. In Brazil, it was Samba. Now, let me show you when the when they white, you know how we you know how we dance in Africa. Everything is the well, West Africa. It, it's the hip. It's very, you know, sensual, it's sexual, it's, you know, it's right. You know what it's for. The, tw right. the twine, twine, twine. Yeah, whining, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, twine, yeah. yeah. So in Trinidad, it was, it was calypso and it was whining. So it's that lower pelvic area, you know, that pelvic thrust, you know. So when right. white people, con so-called conservative white people, they had no problems with slavery and raping slaves. But, you know, watching a woman and a man whine, all of a sudden it's a sin against God. I mean, these people were hypocrites. Right. Anyway. So they began to, you know, when they saw the, 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 the whining, they were like, oh, my God, this is licentious. Meanwhile, the Europeans, they would like put on masks and they would have sex with each other. Mm -hmm. That's one of right. the part of the concept of the carnival. Well, their carnival, you know, they would have sex and you, it, it's basically farewell to the flesh. OK, the day before Lent. Right. In Brazil, when they saw the samba, which is more. It, it's uh, hip shaking. It's not whining. It's hip shaking. And, you know, you wear a very small, you know, bikini. The white Portuguese Catholics in Brazil was like, oh, my God, this is too licentious. And they wanted to crack down on Carnival. So the, the history and the origins of Africans expressing themselves, you know, West Africa, it's, it's the hip, you know, whereas, you know, Northeast Africa is the shoulders, you know, the shoulders and the arms. Southern Africa, it's the foot. Central Africa, which is where whining comes from, it's right. the hip, you know, that Congo, you know. So anyway, um, mainly Central, um, Central Africa, which is Congo. So the white people, I mean, these people were hypocrites, okay? So when they saw the Africans begin to express carnival using um, uh, uh, African ways of dancing, African rhythm, in Trinidad originally was before the steel pan, it was tambu bamboo where you would take the bamboo and you would hit it on the ground. Brazil, it was the bateria with the samba. Okay, it was all percussion with black people, right? So they, they began to crack down on it. And in Trinidad, the slaves actually fought, fought them until they finally gave, gave, um, gave up. This is where you get the canboule riot, you know, the burning of the K, canboule. Okay, that's what it means in Creole. In Trinidad Creole, any Haitians on the line would know that, uh -huh. you know, the Canboulet riot. So they actually fought for Carnival. You know, I, I would love to study the origins of a Carnival in New Orleans, but, you know, I'll do that another day. So in Brazil, it was the same thing. They fought for Carnival. 
Well, I, you, know, I, you know the oldest carnival is actually in uh, Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yep, I do know that. And uh, in the United States, um, there, are, there are literally, I think, like 50 carnivals, but the biggest one is New Orleans. Right. Yeah, so everywhere black people went, it's important. That, well, everywhere white uh, countries, your France, your Portugal, your Spain, main countries, France, Portugal, Spain, where they went, they brought the European carnival. But when they brought the slaves, because Africans had the masquerade, okay, and their festivals, they looked at carnival like, hey, we recognize this. So they took the carnival and they adopted the carnival and created it, which is where we come to 2019, into a multi-billion dollar industry. So going back to what someone said, no, I did not invent carnival. No, I did not create carnival. What I did was I looked at America's carnival and I looked at carnival in Trinidad. I looked at carnival in Brazil. And I also looked at the demographic that I know whose bloodline, black people, who has, they have a spectacular history of creating, inventing cultural and social movements for the art. And I looked at these two things and I said, hmm, a carnival with black Americans at the helm would I strongly believe would be bigger than Brazil. I believe it. Because black I, I Americans can, have I can, this- I can see it. I can, yeah, I can, I can see that yes, too. Yes, I can see it. You know, it's just, it's just a matter of the right city and the right funding, but it's not something that you can do on your own. You gotta get massive funding into this, you know? So to really make it the kind of carnival on par with Brazil, and I strongly believe with Black American, Black American artistic prowess, their musical prowess, their history, by I believe that if Black Americans were to see this and adopt it and they got the funding, I believe, give it two years, they will be on par with Brazil. It will be nothing this planet has ever seen. And, you know, that's just it. So no. I did not invent the carnival. What I did is I looked at the demographic in America, looked at their history for artistic prowess, and designed a carnival for them. That's the first thing I wanted to say. Um, okay. the, second, the second thing is someone said, I don't believe she invented the, um, the iPod and the Kindle. Quite frankly, I don't care. Okay. You know, I'm the one that went through 21 years of hell fighting for this. So I really don't care whether you believe me or you don't. Um, but you can, what you can do is you can go and research the history of stolen black inventions. Oh, there's a ton of them. Oh my God, it's like everywhere you turn, you know? So you can do that. And then it makes it, 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 it really gives you an objective view of how much black across the planet contributed to the advancement of um, culture, the advancement of, uh, from industrial age to the tech age and stuff like that, and how much of it was actually stolen. Most recently, there was a young, there was a black man. He actually created this software, this facial recognition software. I forgot his name. This was a couple of weeks ago. And lo and behold, the police department came to him and said to him, sell us your facial recognition software. He raised $33 million. And he said to him, he said, I'm not going to sell you that. No. He said, because I know you're going to disproportionately use it to target black people. Right. Uh, Well, do you not want to know how the story ended? They targeted him. They arrested him. Bingo. They didn't arrest him yet, but what they did is they, they got his board, one person in his board, to basically throw him out of his company. Okay? Wow. wow. Let me tell you another one in France. This black guy in France is actually uh, African. This guy has the number one black makeup line. He went to the top beauty schools in Paris and he studied. Yeah, he had the number one black makeup on the market. Okay, and um, and his makeup was like, I mean, it was you could tell it was a black person who created this because he really understands black women's skin and especially when it comes to the darker tones of black skin. Right. And lo and behold, you know, they sent in what I call, you know, your uh, economic henchmen or, right. your, you know, your, you know, your um, corporate espionage. So they sent in this white guy to um, 
as a partner to fund, you know, because when your company is going through different stages and they begin to grow, you, you need, you may or may not need something like a venture capitalist, right? So right. he brought in this partner and the partner's like, oh, okay, you know, great, this and that and the other. Lo and behold, the partner got all the paperwork for the company mm -hmm. changed uh, where he was the major, the black creator and the owner, the CEO, he was the major shareholder in the company down to 12%. Oh, when, wow. oh yeah. When he discovered the, the, I mean, they changed all the documents. I forgot his, I actually chat with him on social media. This, this kind of reminds uh, me, are you, are you familiar with the uh, men's warehouse? The suit? Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and see, this is the first time I've ever heard of this. I always thought the, I guess this, the face of the, all right, here's a better one. In fact, let's talk about this one. I'm sure you're familiar with this one. Famous Amos. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Famous Amos never owned that brand. Oh, what? What? You didn't know that? Oh, no. man. You got to research that. The cookies. Oh, wow. He never owned really? it. Nope. Wow. That's amazing. I'm not surprised. Nothing. And, 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 and it was crazy is they still use his likeness. To sell the cookies, I forgot what happened, but yeah, he he own he doesn't own it, doesn't get any royalties, nothing off of it. Like Aunt Jemima, right? There you go. That's another one. In, in yeah. fact, exactly. <laughs> Aunt Jemima, mm -hmm. you know, Aunt Jemima, um, the guy who uh, basically invented whiskey. I forgot his name. Uh, the, the Jack Daniels, the black guy. Jack Daniels. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Black guy showed up. Yeah, him and Henrietta Lack. The entire cancer industry was built on Henrietta Lacks's genes. All your cancer research. There was an article, Dinos, by the way, because you're Yoruba. There was mm -hmm. an article that was released by scientists. I think. Oh, about the, uh, the computer, the computer, the EFA and the computer. Uh, but go ahead, binary code. But go ahead. Oh, actually, that one is older. Where they stole the. Um, it's called um, fractal mathematics. That I'll explain that uh -huh. one later. Where all I'll, I'll explain why mm -hmm. all your modern technology was built off of African spiritual systems. Give me one second, I'll come back to that one. Okay, that's your fractal yeah. mathematics. Okay, right. huh. just put a pin on that one. I'll get back to that one. Okay, but this was actually scientists, and for the love of God, black people, will you stop giving them your blood? Mm -hmm. Scientists last month came to a conclusion. You can go look up this article that the Yoruba people are immune to cancers. Now, why would Western white scientists release, um, release an article saying that Yoruba people in Nigeria are immune to cancers if they weren't trying to give them cancers? Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. So let's go to the bedrock of all your technology, a binary code, right? Right. Okay. So when the Europeans got to Africa, when the racists, I call them albino troglodytes because they were just ridiculous. When these racist um, eugenicists got to Africa, they lied and they claimed Africa had no mathematics. Right. When in fact that the, the bedrock of African mathematics is fractal math. Okay. Let me give you an idea of fractal math. Okay. It's it, it basically kind of like hieroglyphs. For lack of a better word, it's imagery. It's mathematics encoded in imagery. And to simply put it, it's the left side matches the right side. Let me give you an example. Your yin and your yang, or right. yin and yang. Your left side matches your right side. Your day and your night, 12 hours in the day, 12 hours at night, right? Your north and south, okay? Polar opposites. So fractal math basically replicates the idea this is their cosmology now that there is a, there is a, what's on the left side of the equation must equate to what's on the right side of the equation right? right and all of this is contained it tends to be contained in a sacred circle which is your 360 this is how they well i'm not going to go too much into that but this is how they built the pyramids your four-sided um pyramid um which looked the base of it, which looked like a square is not actually, it wasn't built first using a square. It was built first using a circle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you plot your 90 degree angles within the circle. So it's a square within a circle, right? Mm -hmm. So the, the lying scientists said, oh, Africa had no mathematics. 
when in fact African mathematics was an encoded type of mathematics built upon the fractals. Now, this uh, professor from my former university, University at Buffalo, was flying over these so-called African huts. Mm -hmm. And he kept seeing, he's like, hmm, this is interesting, which will allude to the photos I sent you, Dinah. Mm -hmm. You know, he kept seeing that the Africans kept building in these unique shapes. So what he did is he took photos of the unique shapes of how Africans built their, their homestead. Mm -hmm. mm. Continue, continue. And he plugged this into a computer. Okay, sorry about that. No, somebody was okay. called. It's so fine. It's okay. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, it's actually Fitzgerald. I'll, oh, I'll, it? okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk to him later. You could text I, him. I, 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 I'll text him. I'll text him right now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, yeah. So what he discovered, right, was he discovered that the way Africans built their homestead and every all their building construction, when he plugged it into the computer, this is a modern, modern technology now. He said, oh, my God. This is advanced mathematics. And he discovered that the Africans used the binary code um, within fractals to design everything around them. What's also unique, now this is a, the head of mathematics from my former university at mm -hmm. University of Buffalo, okay? What's even better is that the West did not discover fractal mathematics until about 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look at the time frame of when they discovered fractal mathematics, because when you look at your pyramid, and I keep telling people this, I said, when you want to understand the pyramid, you got to look at a computer CPU. It's the same thing. It's a processor. Okay? Mm. So, yeah. So if you want Dynas, you can do this as an experiment. Go to Google. Okay. Google Images. You're going to type in aerial view of the pyramid. I would tell you Teotihuacan, but I don't want to spell it over the phone right now. Teotihuacan. Okay, so type in aerial view of Teotihuacan because that's the best view. Okay, uh, T-E-O. That, that, that's the one in uh, uh, Mexico, Central right? Of, yeah. Okay. I'm show you something, right? So okay. How, how do you spell it? Yeah, T-E-O. Mm -hmm. T-I. Got it right here. It came up. You got it. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. All right. So you're going to look at an aerial Tell me when you find an aerial view of Teotihuacan. I got it right here. Great. Then you're going to open another page, okay? Okay. Okay. And then you're going to go to Google Images again. Okay. Right? And then you're going to type in computer processing unit or CPU. Oh, okay. Okay. I know. <laughs> then you're going to compare them side by side. Now you know where they got the computer from. And exactly what you see in Teotihuacan is mirrored in what you see in Sudan or Kush and exactly what you see in Egypt. All of this is stolen technology, which goes back to what I sent you, Dinos. Yes, the uh, pyramids in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, for those of you, for the lying Europeans who said that West Africa did not have um, pyramids, I want you to type in Dinas the Nasudi pyramids of Nigeria. It's N S U D I, Nasudi pyramids in Nigeria. N S U D I. Okay. Got, got them right here. Do you see the pyramids in Nigeria? 
Yes, ancient Igbo pyramid. That's somebody calling you? Okay, go ahead. Okay. In, in, as soon as I pick up the phone to have a conversation, everyone's calling. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Right. So you see that there were pyramids in Nigeria, right? Right. Right. Now you're going to go to Niger. So you can erase that and you're going to type in Dan Baki Pyramid Niger. How do you spell that? D A N uh -huh. space B A K I. And N I G E R. This is got all it. West Africa. Got, got, got them right here. Dan Baki, do you see the pyramid? Now that that a uh, um that's a decomposing sphinx and pyramid. Okay, and the person who discovered it is an actual black Egyptologist. Okay, so I'm showing you that West Africa has pyramid. Now, what does that tell us? Now, now, the I'm saying, now, now the, the, oh, well, hold on. Oh, goodness. It's, okay, but see, the argument, okay, so are you saying, so because the argument is going to be, well, they don't look like the pyramids of Egypt, and I guess they're decomposing, the one I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah, the one in Danbaki. This was discovered by an Egyptologist, not mm -hmm. me, not your average nobody. This is discovered by someone who studied the pyramids of Egypt. Not only did he study the pyramids of Egypt, he can actually speak the actual ancient Egyptian language, which was, guess what the language was? What was it? Uh -oh. Bantu. Okay, so, okay, real quick, shift gears a little yes. bit. So all this yeah. uh, meta neta, meta neta, mm. mm -hmm. what, what is that? Well, the Medu, well, the Medu, I'm not an expert in the Medu Neta, so I'm not even going to go try. Okay. Okay. But it's basically like your Aoife. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's your cosmology, your sacred right. sciences, the way you live your life, or like Ubuntu. Okay. Okay. It's the same thing. It's like your Aoife. So those of you who are saying this is garbage and this is nonsense, I want you to go to Google and what's the name of this book? The book is called The Relationship Between West Africa and Ancient Egypt. And it shows you how the language, the culture, language, culture, food, and history is similar. Okay? And those of you who don't know, the Queen of Sheba, the third, the last, the, the heiress of Sheba, Sheba Nubia, is alive and she still lives in Sudan and she is on the throne. She is considered the mother queen of all the African royal family. Okay? And you want to guess, Dinah, where she was born? Where? My country. Trinidad. Okay. And she migrated over via... Her parents had to escape Sudan and they had to go into hiding because mm -hmm. there was an extermination campaign to exterminate the royal eastern bloodlines in Africa. You know about this history. You know, you're Haile Selassie, how they murdered him. There were several, many of them got murdered, the, blood, the royal bloodlines, the real royal Egyptian bloodlines. Oh, do you consider Haile Selassie royal bloodline or is that all pseudo? No, he is. Okay. Because, yeah, because this queen, her name is um, Empress Sheba III. You can go look her up. Mm -hmm. And she's actually on the throne in Sudan. And she is the real, not your fake white queen of Sheba. She is a dark black woman. And she has the genetic white hair. Mm-hmm. All the queens of Sheba had white blonde hair genetically. Okay? No, her hair is not dyed. It is a genetic trait that all the queens of Sheba had with dark black skin. Mm -hmm. Okay? And she is, because all the kingdoms of Africa, according to the Cushitic, uh, the Cushitic, uh, the Nubian Kush line, all, right. all the kingdoms and the royal houses of Africa descended from one mother house.
and that is the Nub Nubia Sheba bloodline. Oh. Right. What is also interesting, she was born, they had to flee, and of all the places they fled to, Dinos, this is going to sound crazy, of all the places they fled to, they fled to my island of Trinidad and Tobago. Okay? And okay. where she was born, she was born in Dago Martin. Dago Martin. And it's so funny, because when I went to Trinidad, I was like, this country has pyramids. So I went to go do some digging and discovered that it does. Really interesting stuff. That it actually does. And where she was born, okay, on the other side of the mountains where she was born, there are pyramids there in Trinidad. They, are also, they also discovered one pyramid in Grenada. Okay? So it's really interesting. And the Caribbean, for those of you who know, the Caribbean is called Carib. Ka. Those of you who are Bantu, you would know the meaning of the word Ka. K-A. It means soul. And it's also an Egyptian word for soul. It, and means, it, the, it means book in uh, Yoruba, I believe. Book. There I you mean, go. Kami book in Yoruba. Adewale. There's Kami book in uh, Yoruba. Uh, there's another Adewale in the chat. I just want to confirm okay. that. All right, go ahead. Okay, so ka in Egypt means soul, and ka in Bantu means soul. Ka rib, ka rib, where you get ka ribian, okay, which is Caribbean people. You have the word, the prefix ka. So it's really interesting. Now, why am I saying all of this? I sent Dinah some pictures, because on my uh, channel, on my YouTube channel, we talk about everything. Right. And one of the things we do is we do this thing called mountain mystery, where mm -hmm. we go all over the world searching for a really unique structure. So I ended up in Joss, Nigeria, D O S S, Nigeria. Uh, and we, uh, somebody super chat. Somebody saying you need to uh, email them back. I don't know. Just, yeah, but whatever. I'll go ahead. I'm sorry. I just got to. Okay. Read. All right. So I'll, e okay. yeah. I'll email them back. Guys, give and me then, some. Uh, Tabitha wants to know so what do you recommend for people who have inventions? that are scared of what the government recourse, what action should they take? After you finish your statement, you could uh, address her, her, okay. her, her. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, that's okay, that's no problem. So we look at, um, no, where was I? I just forgot. Oh yeah, so we get to Joss, Nigeria. Oh my God, everyone who's on my, um, if there's anyone from my YouTube channel, we discovered a mountain in Nigeria uh -huh. with not just pyramids, with pharaohs, sphinxes, Okay, and I sent Dinah the picture. There's mm -hmm. one in Joss, Nigeria, with a giant head of an old man. Now, did you see the photo, uh, Dinah? Yes. What do you think? Did you see that photo of the, the giant old man head? I got I gotta have to go see it personally. Like, I need to go see it personally. That's <laughs> a, I, just, I gotta go see it personally. Dinah, you are a hopeless skeptic. <laughs> I mean, I just, I gotta see it personally. I just, I have to, you tell me where it's at, I will go. And make but I way. know the email. Yes, yes. You, but this you gotta fly over though. Okay, you can't. You, it's a mountain. It's like the thing is like three miles wide. So you gotta fly over this. Okay. okay? All right. Cool. So in Nigeria, okay, there is a three mile, and I'm not kidding you. It's about three miles. It's either one or three miles. Giant head of an old man. But what's peculiar? Okay, when you say Olmec, not. I'm serious. Olmec. I mean Olmec, like the me the Mesoamerican Olmec head. Okay. Okay. Continue. Yeah. Like, so the Olmec head in in Mexico, there's a similar Olmec head up in the mountains in Joss, Nigeria. Okay. 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 But what's peculiar? about this old mech head is that when you look at it from a certain angle, it begins to look like a Mesoamerican, a Native American. And I'm like, what the? So all the people, when we did the live, the live show on my channel, everyone who saw it was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. What does that tell you? Not only that, we found a giant Sphinx's head in central, a pharaonic head, not just a, a sphinx, but a pharaoh, pharaonic head. This one is another one that's about a mile long mm -hmm. in Central African Republic. 
we also discovered two crouching sphinxes in southern Sudan. And I want black people to understand this is why white people refuses to leave Africa alone because they have the technologies to see Africa from the sky. Mm -hmm. While you're looking, while your purview is from the ground up, they have satellites that can see the continent from the sky. And I find it interesting. Southern Sudan, where we found the two Bantu sphinxes, there's war. Central African Republic, where we found the massive pharaonic head, there's war. Northern Nigeria with the Fulani. What does that tell us? It tells us while the Africans are looking at the, 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 the continent from the ground up, these white countries with satellites are looking at the continent from the sky down. You can't see what they're seeing and you're wondering why they're always meddling in your country to destabilize it or they're always in the bush taking stuff out from the bush and exporting it on pri from private runway deep in the bush, okay? Because we discovered, I'm like, why does the Democratic Republic of Congo have hundreds of, of, of not airports? These are just planes in the bush. Right. So I need Africans to understand, you need to put up satellites because you got to see your continent from the sky looking down because you're not seeing where they're seeing, what they're seeing. And what I find interesting is that everywhere we find these artifacts, there is some sort of instability. Okay? Yes. So I thought that was really interesting. Okay, so let's get on to, okay, so to answer the question, can you tell me the question again? The question was, if you have a patent or a, a product, uh, okay. how do you patent it without, you know, mm. uh, I guess, raising, um, you okay. know, All right. uh, so, uh, without the government catching a uh, wind to it? All right, this is what I'll say, okay? Um, the first thing is, you have to understand there is um, the Universal Copyright Convention. This is your United States is signatory to the Universal Copyright Convention, okay? I think it's about 174 countries that are signatories to this. Okay. In that, it states very clearly who the inventor of anything is. And in it, it says the first to put it to paper is the inventor. The first to put it to paper is considered the inventor, Universal Copyright okay. Convention. However, okay, when you're dealing with lawsuit or you have to go to court to prove that you're the first, you're going to need to take out a patent from the patent office and get an actual serial number to prove that you are the actual first inventor. That is what you have to do. However, I'll tell you a secret about what Steve Jobs did, who I hate. I hate that man. But mm -hmm. I'll tell you something about what he did. When Apple was in the first stages of building the company, they didn't have money for a patent. So what Steve Jobs did is he basically made images of the original computers, not my iPod and Kindle, okay? The original computers, and he submitted the image to the copyright office because they couldn't afford a patent at the time when they first began. Mm -hmm. So that's another way in which you can protect your work. You can get the images copywritten, okay? If you can't afford a patent, because patents are thousands of dollars. Now, in my own history, there was the, the person who says, I don't believe she invented the iPod and the Kindle, and I really don't care. I was 19 at the time, okay? And I thought this person was my friend. And the person was rich. I knew the person for a very long time. I, they were rich. And I said to him, I said, listen, you know, I, came, I set up the business meeting to get money. I actually invented, um, uh, it was three things at the time, um, around that time period. I went to him to get money for a patent. And basically, he did to me what they did to the guy who created M-Pesa. He basically said, ah, no one would want this. And as soon as I left, he struck a deal. And they had, they had the iPod rolling and I was flown out to London while it was launched in the United States. And I didn't discover the, the theft 
Yeah, I so I, the iPod came out, uh, well, like 2003, maybe 2004? No, my dear. The iPod came out in 2002. There was a mini was, launch, okay. not the nationwide launch. No, 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 no. Not the nationwide launch. The original launch of the iPod came out, I think, two weeks, two and a half weeks after September 11th. Okay. Uh, that was the private launch where the person I went to, David Chesky, he was invited by Steve Jobs for that launch in Cupertino, California, not the nationwide launch. You see how these people operate? Yeah. 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 And of all the engineers, of all, there are millions of engineers. Of all the engineers he invited, he invited the guy I took it to. I mean, what's the irony? Come mm. on. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so I know how they operate. You know, these snakes, they, you know, you know how they go. You know how they are. Guys, so let's, hit, let's hit the uh, like button. We have 174 people watching, only 91 likes. Please hit that like button. All right, go ahead and continue us, Miss. Yeah, Ray. sure. So that, that's what I suggest that you do. You have to get it protected because there's no way for you to defend it. If you go to court, it'll be your word against theirs. Now, I'll tell you this. When it comes to technology, as soon as I'm having a conversation, the rain decides to fall. Okay, so um, when you're talking about technology, technology is a beast because they monitor. Let me tell you what happened to me. Now, what? I left the country. I had to leave the country because I was like, look, I can't take this anymore. Okay, this is craziness. Um, so I left the country for about eight months and went to Trinidad. Now, okay. I didn't tell anyone what I was going to do in Trinidad, right? What I wanted to do in Trinidad was I wanted to go to Trinidad to patent some stuff because I figured it would have been cheaper, right? To get some patents done in Trinidad because I figured, hey, it would be cheaper to do it in Trinidad. So while I was preparing my trip to Trinidad, lo and behold, Apple decides to patent the smartwatch in Trinidad. Wow. You can go look it up. What does that tell you? They had the whole patent under lock. They had the whole patent office under lock. I couldn't even patent my stuff in Trinidad. I was like, they'll just steal it. They, I they, got, I got, I got to connect you with uh, Sophia Stewart. Have you, have you talked to Sophia? Yes, before? of course. I know Sophia Stewart. I've okay. spoken to her. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We had a conversation before. Yeah. Okay. So all of the technology that Sophia Stewart wrote about, I know that technology all too well. Right. All too well. I know that technology personally. Okay, so going back to your patent, that's what I suggest you do. But this is what I'll tell you. When it comes to tech patents, okay, if you're dealing, I'll, I'll give you some um, back history. So I received, when I went public, I had this uh, a white guy who was a rocket engineer for NASA. Contact okay. me. He heard my story and he contacted me and he said, you are telling the absolute truth. And I'm like, what? So he sends me pictures. This guy builds engines for NASA. Real deal. Okay. Right. So you can call me a phony, but not him. You know? So he's like, he's like, listen, you're telling the truth. And I was like, okay. And I read the email and in the email, this guy, white guy, who was a, a rocket engineer for NASA, he says to me, he said, listen, I invented a quantum computer and the CIA basically, I got to be careful, but certain alphabet, 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 right, alphabet boys, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was, uh, 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 yeah, 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 I didn't even want to say alphabet boys, but you know, right, alphabet came after him to kill him. Oh, wow. Yeah, to get the, yeah, yeah. Okay. I had, you wouldn't believe the amount of inventors that contacted me. OK, and they're like, we believe you. We would never have believed you. There's another. Let me tell you who actually invented Facebook. Mm -hmm. It's not those twins that actually invented Facebook. And it's sure as hell not Mark Zuckerberg. It's um, an actual professor. And he does an interview online where right. he breaks down the lawsuit that he's been fighting Facebook for. Right. For the last goddamn like 10 years fighting Facebook mm. to get the rights to Facebook that okay. Facebook do. Okay. So what is my point? My point is that when you're dealing in technology, 
This is my advice to you when you're inventing anything technological, and I'm telling you from a personal experience, you can believe me or not, I don't care. When you're inventing anything, whether it's for a car, which I did, okay, I, uh, I designed a smog capture so that you would mm -hmm. capture the, um, the exhaust. You know, when you drive your car, there's an exhaust plumage that comes out of the back of the car, right? right? So what I did is I created this um, a, 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 a device you can retrofit to your car. It basically is like a, um, a smog capture. So when the car starts and it starts moving, the silt, well, not silt, but the, um, I can't even think of the words right now. The exhaust from the car, it doesn't right. pollute the environment, you see? Mm -hmm. But I would never submit this to the patent office. You know why? Why? Right. Right. Figure it out, right? Okay. The car company. So they it would own. stop the, what would it do with the exhaust again? Okay, so you know, cars and trucks and stuff like that, they, they pollute. Right, correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it's an exhaust capture. That keeps stopping just, pollution. Yeah. So what comes out of the back, the exhaust of the pipe is not a black cloud. You see? Okay. What comes out of the back of the tailpipe from the exhaust is um, just hot air. Right. So this would, this would help with emissions. Yeah. But I'd never submit. I just designed it to retrofit the car, but I've never submitted to the patent office. I have it sitting there in my, um, I have it sitting here. I reinvented the traffic light. I redesigned the traffic light. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have it sitting there. I'm never going to submit these things to the, but I'm never going to submit it to the patent office in the U S these are things they steal. Mm -hmm. So my advice to you, if you, if you invent anything technological, here's my advice, travel outside of the United States. Okay. Get your patent rights, which might be cheaper, outside of the United States. And you're given, I think, three, I think it's either three months or six months before you file the patent in the United States because of that universal copyright convention. Okay? okay. Right? So if you're dealing in things like technology or you're dealing in anything that's like, like, like um, automotive or like major industry, okay? Mm -hmm. Where you're, where you where you could potentially revolutionize major industries. You have to understand patent offices have moles in them, whether from the corporation or whether from the alphabet board. Of course. Yeah, of course. Right. And their job is to look for patents to either block from coming to market or to steal right out of the patent office, okay? So my advice to you, when you're coming, when, you're, when you're, you're dealing in things like tech or your major sectors, and you know you have a disrupting technology that could revolutionize major sectors of an economy, okay. my advice to you is patent outside of the United States, sure. and you do not patent in a first world country. Okay, so let me ask you, so why, how is, why is Tesla, uh, Elon Musk, Pretty uh -huh. much getting all this support. Yeah, but Elon Musk is part of the boys club. Of course he's okay, going to yeah. get support. Okay, yeah, okay. You, you and I are not part of the boys club. They right. determine who can go and revolutionize industry. You understand what I'm saying? Right. But when it comes to you or me or someone who doesn't, who doesn't come from you know, a billionaire background or not part of these clubs or whatever, no, mm -hmm. you can't just trust me. Do not just go in there and uh, don't do it. You, America, is signatory to the Universal Copyright Convention. These are the patents and the copyrights that govern the whole world. This is from the UN. The United States is signatory to it. So if you could find a tiny little island, like Apple did when they were following me to Trinidad in 2015, crazy bundle. This company's crazy as hell. Mm -hmm. Okay? So when you, if you could find like a small little island that no one knows, you can patent it there, and the United States gives you, I think it's like three months or something, to patent it in the United States. You will get the patent in that country, and then you just transfer your patent to American soil. That's my advice to you. When you're dealing with anything in major sectors, like your tech, your automotive, your energy, okay, that's my advice to you. 
shout out to everybody in the chat room. Please hit that uh, like button. Also, too, we'll take a couple callers. Let me, uh, I don't know what happened, but I locked the screen that, hold on one second. The screen that had the uh, actual stream on it just kind of just disappeared off. Uh, let me just, oh, let me try to open up a new window here. But uh, go, go ahead and uh, continue, Renetta. Wow, wow. Yeah. No problem. So that's basically what you're looking at, right? So when it comes to when it comes to things like patents and copyrights, if you can't afford a patent, let me tell you something. Just get a, a, um, a um, an image. If you can do a rendering, you can actually go to like Fiverr, where you get an engineer to do a CAD rendering of what you're trying to do, and then submit that to the copyright office. Okay, because it shows ownership. Once you get that number, it shows that you are the one who did it. Now, one of the things I did not invent this, but I improved upon an existing invention, which is still considered an invention. Remember what I told you about invention? It, there are two classifications of inventions. The first one is where you invent something out of nothing. The second one is when you improve upon an existing product, okay? Mm -hmm. So, um, so what I did, this one I invented for the African market. I cannot go into too much detail about it, but it's for the areas of transportation for the rural areas. So I improved upon an existing invention, and this is something that I would like to launch on the African continent because I think that it's needed. I can't really talk too much about it, um, but in a couple months, I, I would love to do an interview if you would have me, Dinas, back cool. on. You, you, yeah. you, you have a home here. You have a home. Right. Okay, thank, thank you so much, Dinah. I appreciate that. No, so no problem. in like a couple of months, I think by September or October, when um, I have some things cleared up, I would like to do um, a, a video to show the Africans what I created for the rural system, for the mm -hmm. rural, rural uh, transportation on the African continent. And hopefully we'll, we're we'll, looking we'll come to Nigeria with me and we could just present it. Oh my God, that'd be great because I'm actually, I have some, a friend of mine who I can't say too much on the line. We'll talk off. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll talk off. Yeah. That's but that's fine. exactly, that's exactly, that's yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just, just come and roll. Okay. That sounds good. Sounds good. So yeah. So that would be in, um, in a couple of months. And basically I, um, remember my whole concept about quantum jumping the African continent. What this does not do is it doesn't because everything I design now, like if I know I'm inventing anything that is a disruptor, okay? Let me give you an example of a disruptor. A disruptor would be a cell phone replacing the, your home phone, right? That's a right. disrupting technology, right? Um, if I know, this is me personally, if I know that I'm inventing something like my traffic light, okay? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it because I didn't submit it to the patent office and I never will because they'll just steal it. Okay, so what I did for the traffic light, right? I looked at the, the modern traffic light and one, one of the things I noticed is that if you're driving on the street and it's a hot day or you're driving on the street and it's snowing, right? A lot of times the driver has to kind of tilt their head forward if they're too close to the traffic light. Mm -hmm. Does any can I get a witness? Yes. Right, that makes sense, right? Right. Okay. To, to look under, right? To look to see. Yeah. It. yeah and yeah. then worst of all, if you're driving towards the sun, okay, so you got to pull down the little flap in front of you, right? So I was looking at the traffic light invented by a black man, and I said, that, you know, I said there should be a way to reinvent this traffic light. So what I did is I created two pillars, one on the left side of the street one on the right side of the street, and I use lasers, okay? So when it's time for, you know, your red, your yellow, and your green, I hope I said that right, your mm -hmm. red, your yellow, and your green, okay? Instead of you having to tilt your head forward if you're close to the actual traffic light, instead of that, what would happen is laser beams will come from the side of the two beams on the left side of the street, on the right side of the street the lasers would reflect the exact same color, your red, your yellow, and your green, right? Mm -hmm. Are you getting a visual of this traffic light? Yes, yes, I am. Right, so from the ground up. So no longer does a driver actually have to tilt their head forward if they're driving towards the sun. What I also noticed too is if you're driving towards the sun and you're sitting in the back seat, 
God help you because there's nothing protecting your eyes, right? But whatever, that's, an, that's for another day. So what I did is I, I, I created this laser traffic light. And mm-hmm. the laser traffic light, it goes literally from the poles, left side, right side of the street. It goes all the way up. Your red, it flashes in your red, your yellow, and your green, right? So you mm-hmm. no longer have to tilt your head or do any sort of maneuvers, right? So when it's time for the car to stop, okay, the laser goes red. Mm-hmm. So you know, right, it literally, the laser beams are like bars. So you stop in front of the laser, right? It doesn't make the driver uncomfortable. He can see it directly in front of him. What I also incorporated into the traffic light was your traffic um, public service announcement. How Mm -hmm. many times you're driving on the street and the public service announcement is flashing above your head? Right. Now, on Mm -hmm. a sunny day, that can be hard to see. So inside of the laser traffic light, when they have your public service announcement, your public service announcements will literally be flicking from the laser. Right. You get an idea of what the traffic light looks like? Yes. Right. So the other thing I designed into the traffic light is your biometrics. The only reason why I will never submit this to the patent office is because this is going to be Big Brother on steroids. Right. (laughs) So you know you have cars that run the traffic light, right? Right. So right. what I did is when the car runs the laser light, that's what I call it. When the, la- the car runs through the laser light, it literally scans the car. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, your biometrics, I call this autometrics. Okay. Yeah. So as the car runs through the laser light, it literally scans the plate and scans the make and the model of the car. Okay, the reason why I'd never submit this to the U.S. Patent Office is because this is going to be Terminator on steroids. So that's one of the inventions that I came up with. For those of you who have any doubt who invented the iPod and the Kindle. Right? Oh, wow. Yeah. Let's see. Anybody want to call in? Let me, um, the email is in the chat. If you want to call in, go. Let me, how did you develop this genius, Renata? Be, well, I, I wouldn't really call it a genius. It's in all of us. It's just most black people, it's dormant in them because of oppression. Somebody, you know? uh, shout out to Susan. Uh, she, she wants to know what about giving blood? What are your thoughts on that? Well, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, the problem with giving blood, especially when it comes to black people, is, you know, eugenicists run the planet. And when you understand yeah, eugenics, I, 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 I am cutting you off. I'm sorry. Uh, in, like in the low income uh, neighborhoods in Atlanta, they now have it where you can give this plasma in the mm-hmm. lines and, and wrapped around a building. Exactly. But you got to know what your blood plasma can be used for. The mm-hmm. last thing you need is to end up with a microchip because you got some uh, Henrietta Lacks blood, or Henrietta mm-hmm. Lacks genes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, or healing cells or immortal cells, okay? So you just got to understand that eugenicists run the planet. All right. And once you understand eugenicists run the planet, you mm-hmm. should exercise caution with your blood. But the thing with the United States is that they pinprick you when you're born, if you're born in a hospital, so they already have your blood. Mm-hmm. So there you go. Uh, she, well, uh, Susan wants to know, I was talking about if you go to the hospital and have an illness. Yeah, well, if you have an illness, you don't have a choice. They have to run your blood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The question is, what do they do after they take the sample? Right. Okay, so that's the question. Do they destroy the, 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 um, the sample when they're done, or do they keep it? Okay? Hmm? Hmm. No, I mean, um, I mean, that's a good question. Do they keep the sample? That's a good yeah. question. I never thought about that. De- depending on your genetics, they may keep it. Mm. Yeah. Depending on your genetics, they will probably keep it. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought about that. I'll tell now, you this. If you have indigenous me... blood, they're keeping your blood sample. What's protocol? Protocol? Yeah. What's protocol? I don't understand the question. 
protocol protocol what's protocol for if they uh, take your blood because you know usually they have uh, uh operating procedures oh so. oh i see i see what you say oh i'm sorry uh well sure. i'm not versed i'm not a nurse so i can't tell you what standard, uh, standard of huh I was, I was asking if anybody was a nurse in the chat room yes i'm not a nurse so i can't oh. i cannot give you that but what i do know is you have a patient bill of rights and you can probably exercise your rights when you when you turn over your blood mm -hmm. to have it destroyed, but there's no way to prove it. You see? Okay. So that that's something that you should consider. Like, you know, if you want the samples destroyed, you know, like, you know, for example, the, the placenta, when you when you have um when a woman gives birth, you know the placentas are kept. And the people who keep it no, in the no, gas. No, no, actually, the mother of my child uh -huh. kept hers. Oh, she and kept she, hers. Oh, great. And, she, and, she, and they made like a concussion. And yeah, and ate it. Ate it, yeah. Yeah, that's excellent. Yep. Oh, we use placenta in the hair, you know, in the Caribbean. Yeah, that's really good. I'm glad that she kept her. I'm glad that she did that. And that's what you should do with the placenta. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what you should do with the placenta. Yeah, yeah. So that's what, uh, that's what she did. So. Yeah, that's very good. That's actually yeah. very, very good. She ate it. Yep. You know. That's very good. Let's see here. Guys, if anyone wants to call in, send me an email. You are free to send me an email and hop on. Uh, let's see what other let's see what else we have in the chat room. Guys, make sure you hit that like button. We have 193 people watching, only 129 likes. Uh, let's see here. Vincent Sipson says, I work in the hospital. When you don't keep the umbilical cord, we have your stem cells. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Precisely. Precisely. One thing I do know is that if you have, um, if you're native or you're indigenous, that that the blood, uh, native or indigenous to the Americans, and there were black indigenous people in the Americans, like the black Caribs of the Caribbean. My okay. gra yeah. my grandmother's bloodline is black Carib from Shaka Shakari. I know where they originated from, okay? The Caribs were not your light-skinned people that they look like today. They looked exactly like, except they had our hair texture, mm -hmm. and everyone in my family looked like a Carib, with, with the exception of me, because I look more like my dad, whose genetics is pure African, okay? Okay, um, so, okay so the black Caribs, yeah. do they recognize themselves as being African? My grandfather did. I saw a picture of him. And I, when I spoke to my grandmother, I mean, he's the color of a black plastic bag. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, and when I spoke to my grandmother, I was like, Grandma, you know, like, what's our bloodline? My grandmother, because Trinidad is, is, a, is really one of the most mixed countries in the Caribbean, right? Mm -hmm. um, Trinidad is mainly Indian, black, uh, some European, um, and indigenous. You're carrot. Okay? okay. All right. So the queen of the carib, her features are black. You can recognize that nose, that face. And the caribs have very strong features. They look exactly like the old men, okay? Who also look like the Australian original people who also look like your, your typical Bantu African, okay? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, my grandfather... Okay, on my grandmother's side, from what she told me, she said to me, he said, I said, you know, like, you know, what part of Africa is she from? She said, no, he's from Shaka Shakari, which is one of the islands off the coast of Trinidad. He said they did not come to the Caribbean by a slave ship. They were always here. He said, but my grandfather recognized their homeland was Africa. Okay, so what yes. about, uh, you know, I'll call them pseudo... Um, uh -huh. Native pretenders, uh -huh. uh, tall chicken saw uh -huh. uh, Indians. Like, how do you how do you feel about that? Like those. Okay. Uh, friends. What I, mm -hmm. Okay. What I'll say about that is this: when you look, if you go to, even to the museum in Brooklyn, which I did, okay, they have the original depiction of the people of the Native Americans. Okay. The Native Americans, the ones they portray on television are your mongoloid, okay, which is Asiatic. But when you move 
look closer to the equator, as you begin to get closer to the equator, you find two phenotypes, mm -hmm. okay? Two phenotypes. A mixture of your mongoloid with your indigenous, you're moving mm -hmm. away from the equator now, and they tend to be, they tend to have more of a red undertow. What they don't like to show is the original picture when the Spaniards, the Spaniards and the French and the Portuguese came. Mm -hmm. The original depictions of those closer to the equator look like you and me. Okay? There is no mistake. So I wouldn't be surprised. And one of the, one of the tribes, actually two of them, both the Caribs and the Arawak were both in the United States, okay? But they were in the southern parts of the United States. So I wouldn't be surprised if there are Black Americans. I would not be surprised if there are Black Americans who lean towards that. The issue is this, okay? Mm -hmm. You have to remember 200 million original people in the Americans in the Americas was slaughtered. That means the gene pool, the genetics of 200 million people are forever lost. Mm -hmm. What does that tell us? It tells us the genetic variations that was on this continent prior to the disease bringing two-legged snakes that came out of Europe, that's what I call them, uh, prior to them arriving, the gene pool of the Americas was far different than what they depict to you today. So when someone says that they're Black uh, Native Americans, it's not implausible. The difficulty is that genetic pool was exterminated. So there's no definitive way to prove. My, the reason why it's easy for me, is because I know there was never slavery on Shaka Shakari. Mm -hmm. The people who lived on Shaka Shakari prior to the um, polio were the Black Carrots. The Trinidadian government, when they had a polio outbreak, had to mm -hmm. move them off the island and move uh, to quarantine the people who had polio, quarantine them on Shaka Shakari. Okay. Right? So it's not implausible. The issue is how do you prove it using genetics? And it's and, difficult and, and, they, and they refuse to attempt yeah. to prove it because they think it's a government um, yeah. conspiracy yeah. to keep them from their land of America. So they, you know. Yeah. Well, some of them are, honestly, some of them are straight crazy. Yeah. Okay. Because when you study, which is real, don't let anyone tell you the out of Africa model is not real. The out of Africa model is real because right. Africa, the Bantu, is not the only physiology that you find in Africa. Right. The, the thing with the Bantu is that they were the ones who spread out the most and influenced all of the African continent. Okay? And they were the ones who migrated the most out of the African continent. Right? So the out of Africa model, which your Lucia in Brazil, when they originally found Lucia and they did the, um, the imagery for Lucia, just like your, um, your Cheddar Man in England, they right. discovered that Lucia's phenotype and she looked exactly like a black Southern African. Then all of a sudden the museum in Brazil burned last year and her yeah. bones were burned. You know how these devils do, right? right. Right. And Lucia is 12,500 years old. And Lucia, when they originally came out with the article, they said she came from Africa. And when you look at Lucia, that's a Southern African woman. That right. phenotype I can recognize anywhere. Okay. The issue is with the racist eugenicists who like to tell black people what they, who is black and who's not black, they depict black phenotype in one dimension. That is your strong noses, your full lips, oval eyes, round face, what looks like the sphinx with a 45 degree angle arch to the neck, okay? That is their depiction of the only people they consider African. When in fact, the African phenotype, 
It's not one phenotype. It is many. So you literally find your Ethiopians can have a nose bridge. Your Eastern Africans, they have nose bridges and straight noses. Right. Okay. So that's the issue. The issue is the people who control the sciences are eugenicists and racist. So, and their ideology of who's black and who's not, black to them is only banned to features. When we as black people know, look at your own family, like mine, most of my family are high yellow. I'm, I'm one of the only ones that came out this color. Okay? Mm -hmm. And they all look carib. Every last one of them look carib. Every last one of them look carib. I'm the only one that came out with this, with these, with these lips that need Jesus and, and my nose. <laughs> and really, uh, uh, shout out to Fafu Malal. She wants to know about the, the sperm banks and what they do with sperm. And then there was another question she had in regards to WADA or WA, hold on, W-A-B-N, I think it was, or? Oh, Y-Band, Y-Band. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Y-Band, okay. So the sperm banks, I don't know too much about. Um, I can't tell you anything about the sperm banks, but... Uh, I'll tell you this, for whatever good they're doing, you know, they're always up to something mischievous because they are depopulationists. The, the, the uh, eugenicists are depopulationists. And you know who they hate the most? Black people. Right? Right. The Y bands. Okay, so the Y bands is they use Y bands for many reasons. Y bands, one of the reasons which I know personally, because I have implants, Y bands inside of me. Mm -hmm. Y bands are microchips for telemedicine, okay? When the troglodytes got me, they implanted me. So for those of you who think I didn't invent the iPod, well, I did. And they made sure and they microchipped me too, right? Anyway, so Y bands are for telemedicine, okay? But there are also other nefarious reasons why they use Y band. And Y band is for the police state. Practically what Y bands are is they put the same microchip that's inside of your computer or your cell phone inside of the person's body. That person is then hooked up to the internet, okay? Where a doctor in India or a doctor in Germany or a doctor in Brazil or in the United States could literally monitor your body from the inside. The police or military application of this would be, let's say your government employee and you work as a diplomat, they would put this inside of you, high-level diplomats, practically all of them are microchip, so that the government could know where you are at all times. If you served in the military, they're implanting this, the soldiers so that, you know, in case they die or, you know, unfortunately something happens and they, you know, distraught or distressed, they can find the person's body. The police use of the Y bands is, to me, is the most nefarious. Because they can get a doctor to put the Y bands in someone, unbeknownst to them, and they can monitor the person. You know, and this is called this, and they use this for predictive policing. So that's what Y bands are, and it's all via computer. Did I answer that question? What a nightmare, uh, yeah. right? Yeah, that that uh, answered the question. Mm -hmm. See what else we have here in the. Uh... Chat room. Everyone hit that like button as you come into the chat room, please. Uh, John Klein says, us Africans come in all shapes, forms, and colors, but white. There we go. <laughs> well, not no, 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 no. Oh, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. I know John Klein's going to want to hop on now. I know oh, John no, 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 no. No, ahead, no, 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 no. Before on. there was white people, there were what? Albinos. Hello. Yeah. The recessive gene occurred first in the albino, in the African albino. So African genetics control all spectrums that are on this planet, all of it, not excluding any. However, whites are not native to Africa, but the recessive trait of the albino is what gave birth to what you have, what you call the white race, the recessive gene. Well, the human ones anyway. I can go there, but I'm not going to go there today because okay. uh, Dinah is going to be like, oh, hell no. <laughs> let, let me ask you this. I know people are, aren't really being proactive. A lot of 
I would say ADOS aren't being proactive because they're waiting on, um, I would say, uh, mm-hmm. what's going to power this reparations is going to play out. What are, you, what are your thoughts on reparations? Okay, from a spiritual standpoint, what I'll say is this, okay? Um, I, I, I'm somewhat psychic. Reparations is old in the spirit realm. Black people are owed a lot of money, mm-hmm. okay? What I'm seeing is this is that the ruling troglodytes are like, we can't pay this back. How the hell are we going to pay this? If we open the floodgates for them in one country, all of the Americas is going to fall. Okay? Reparations will come. But it's after the reparations that I'm concerned about for Black Americans. Okay. Okay? And I'll say this. It's going to come but it's, it may not come when you want it, but it's coming. Mm-hmm. It's coming. What I will say is this, okay? It's important for Black Americans who are pushing for reparations to understand how the ruling troglodytes operate. I know because I got very close to them, okay? I worked at the UN, and I'm not going to tell you my, uh, what happened to me at the UN. You know, anyway, so the ruling troglodytes, when they pay you black Americans that reparations, you know how these people are. Okay, they don't give a shit about money. What they are afraid of is the karmic debt. Let me show you why and why I don't espouse to any Abrahamic religion. The Abrahamic religion teaches you to forgive trespasses. No other religion teaches this. The African spiritual systems do not let you get away with doing evil. Right. You have to pay. You have to correct. This is why I believe the African spiritual systems are correct, are the correct spiritual systems, because they do not allow you to inflict injury to someone without correcting it. Okay? What these entities fear is karmic debt Mm. and if the white rake they're dying off guys this is why they're manipulating all of nature okay they are literally manipulating all of nature okay to get them to stabilize their number but it's not going to be stabilized because they don't uh, they refuse to accept the karmic debt Thus, the reason for trying to block out the sun. Okay? Comic death is coming whether or not they like it. They have to pay for what they did to black people. It's already set and it is in motion. They have to pay for the blood of the Native Americans. You cannot stop this. It's coming. And they know it. This is why the Nazi faction and the Zionist faction, that there's only two factions that control this planet. And what's above them is not human. Let me, let me give you a, a foundation for you to understand spiritually what's going on. There Go are ahead. only two factions on that control this planet. Both of which hate black people. Hmm. They hate all of humanity. Anything that's a true human, they hate. But what they hate the most is the people that can live under the sun. Guess who that is? Us. Bingo. Right? Because they want to bring in, they want to bring in the technotronic era. That is the so-called upgrade where they strip human beings of their humanity and they're part cyborg, part human. That's the Nazi and the Zionist plan. They both (laughs) differ in how they want to run the planet. You see what I'm saying? This is where the ideologies clash. How to run the planet. The Nazi ideology believes in perpetual war. This is why certain countries are always going around the planet bombing other countries. Not just bombing them, but stealing their ancient technology. When you see the aggressive push towards war, know that it's the Nazi faction. 
the Zionist faction at the top. Okay, I'll explain who they get their orders from. This is in the spirit realm. Okay, the Zionist faction believes a little bit differently. They believe in depopulation and then having a slave class. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you depopulate the bulk of the population with the remainder as slaves. What they both have in common is that they do both Nazi faction and Zionist faction. What they both have in common is that they both want non-fully human. What does that mean? They want either the Zionist slave class to be part computer, part human. Okay? Mm. The Nazi faction believe in the Ubermensch. That is your Superman. That is your super soldier where they are genetically enhanced and technologically enhanced to be above and beyond human. What is your superhuman? Your superhuman or your uberman can jump off a 10-foot story building and survive. They're already doing this, guys. Okay. And one of the places you can go to research your Ubermensch is your DARPA. Okay? They're already doing your, your Superman. But before they technologically upgraded the Superman, I'm, I'm, I was in contact with a bunch of super soldiers. I, I don't talk to them right now. These are engineered humans. Okay? And they I mean, I mean, I could really go there, Dinos, but I'm afraid Dinos is going to be like, what the hell is this girl talking about? <laughs> uh, oh, Papu Malau is on the uh, other line, on the line. Yeah. Hi, Papu. <laughs> I like that, Papu. Yeah. Hi, Renetta. Impressed. Hey. Sister. How you doing? What's up, honey? What's going on? You are answering the question about the plasma and the sperm right now. And that's why I called in. I said, if she don't go there, I'm going to go there, but I'm going to leave it to you to carry on. Yeah, no, <laughs> I don't no, no, have no. that much courage yet. So, yeah, yeah. I'm in basically, the Go yeah, ahead, basically, um, the reason why I said, you know, ask about the sperm and stuff is because, you know, he asked about the plasma, somebody asked about blood, and it ties exactly what you, it ties into exactly what you're talking about now. Let's take it back to the spiritual part, though. You were talking about, you know, genetics and everything, um, but it's also, for, for what's not being used for good blood, for genetics, you know, for health and stuff, is being used for spiritual food as well as a part of making the superhumans and the armies and the clones that you're talking about. Bingo. So it's going to go one step beyond AI where you have a more human, like you said, partial human, partial robotic or, or um, um, you know, computerized or whatever being. So in essence, after they finish collecting everybody's DNA, everybody's plasma, so little bit by little bit, they're collecting all of our internal essences, uh, blood, semen, you know, sperm, placentas, um, the, the umbilical cords, the organs, the saliva from the DNA tests, everything. They're getting everything that they need on a wide scale to create these beings that you're talking about, as well as looshing and leeching from our spiritual, you know, um, essence, the life force, our ashe, that's in our blood and in our bodily fluids. So not only are they getting their, they're not only, they, not only are they harvesting for physical reasons, but they're harvesting for spiritual reasons. So they're empowering themselves, you know, um, with it. But at the same time, and I want to stop talking because, you know, my face is on here. <laughs> um, the, like you said, it's exactly what you said about them killing off or trying to minimize the human, the pure human race as much as possible. And then there'll be like a whole bunch of, and I, I don't, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, this it's out there. It's already happening. You can look these things up. Just go to some of the cloning companies. The patents are out there and everything. Um, but so you'll have people that look like us walking around. You know what I'm saying? So they've created a whole nother type of, at least this is their agenda. Will it work fully? Will it take over the entire planet? 
I doubt it, but I know that it, you know, they will, they've already met, you just said you've been in contact with some of those superhumans because their, their agenda is to make uh, the superhuman army, the hybrid army, so to speak. Um, but that is the reason why I asked uh, about the sperm because you have mostly like, like, like um, Andy Wallace said, they're lining up around the corner in, um, in, in uh, lower class or impoverished neighborhoods per se, to remember your exact terminology and collecting plasma. Well, you offer people some money and they'll come and take that big old needle and, and you know, just, it's, you know, they always put something ap um, appeasing in front of you or, um, you know, tempting before you. They go for people that are probably more likely to be desperate and they get what they want just like that. The same with the sperm. How, when's the last time anybody ever spoke about a sperm bank? Why do we not hear about the sperm bank anymore? And how many of our men were headed to the sperm bank? Only maybe a little bit less than a decade ago. Every time you turn around, somebody was making a joke or somebody was going to the sperm bank, giving sperm and collecting eggs. I mean, collecting money. Well, the eggs are next. You know, taking... You know, women don't replace, like men keep reproducing sperm. Women do not keep reproducing eggs. So they can convince our women, we'll give you $3,000 for some of your eggs. You you have no idea how I'll many eggs in. they're taking. At, pardon me? I said, I'll, I'll back you up. Continue. Yeah. Um, right. We, you, the, the individual who's giving those eggs or selling her eggs, she has no, I, I, um, no way of proving how many eggs they've taken that for her, that's like impossible, you know? Um, but they go, you can't produce anymore. So now they are decreasing the race a little bit more. Um, but they're, they're harvesting, they're harvesting, you know, all of this, they're getting all of the pieces that they need to make the most human type body possible. Um, I want to say to, our African brothers and sisters and our, you know, whichever term you use in black, African, we all African. Um, please stop giving up your bodily fluids if you can help it. Get back to natural medicines, get back to the African herbalists and the Chinese traditional medicine, the CT, um, CTM, Chinese traditional medicine. You have healers out there that can tell you exactly what's going on inside of your body without having to draw blood, without having to run tests. You know, um, there are healers out there plenty. If we would just go back to embracing what we used to be and what we used to do long ago, we would not need to be going and giving blood every time we turn around. And the healing is there. There is absolutely nothing that cannot be healed. And I'm not just speaking cliche. It is a fact, you know, and Dr. Sebi wasn't the only one out there curing things. There are a lot of us out there that are actually curing things, but they remain quiet. He put his life on the line. So yes, sis, what you got to say now? I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so I'll, 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 here's how I'll back you up, okay? Mm -hmm. Um. When I, how do I put this? I'm going to lose Dinos on this one. He's going to be like, what the hell are they talking I'm, about? I'm, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. All right, Dinos. We're about to go there, okay? Come oh, on, God, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Dinos, on <laughs> Dinos, I told you you need to go sit with Credo Mutua. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why I told you to sit with Credo Mutua, because what I'm about to give you wouldn't sound so crazy. Now, I was explaining to you about the two hybrid factions okay, that control the planet, okay. okay? All right. The Nazi faction and the Zionist faction, uh -huh. both of whom are not fully human. Right. Okay, let me stress that. They're not fully human, and I mean it. Above them is where you get the Nazis follow the Vril reptile. Uh -huh. Okay? The Zionists follow the Draco reptile. Okay, this is where the Nazis, the Vril taught the Nazis about rocket sciences. Okay, uh, and this is where you get Vril power. Okay, 
the um, and and you know nuclear sciences and stuff like that. Okay, the Draco is where you get your things like your Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, the Africans are gonna kill me on this one. No, no, no. Okay, your 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 (laughs) old test they're gonna roast me on this one. Okay, but that's okay. This is where you get your Abrahamic religions. These are Draco uh, religions. Okay. Draconian, draconian, right? Big, single. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, this is where you get your Abrahamic, the root of your Abrahamic religions. I'm not talking about what they stole from Kemet and what they stole from Sumeria. I am talking about how these religions are designed. This is why you have things like your blood sacrifices. Yahweh was the one that introduced the blood sacrifice. Okay. You read that in your book of Genesis. And you're talking serpent, which is a Draco. Okay, they hide these things in there. And your dragon in your revelation, okay, in the book of Revelation. So you're dealing with your Draco and you're dealing with your Vril. Okay? Now, what I wanted to tell you is on my part, they've been after me since, I mean, they really, really were after me which is ironic because they tend not to mate with dark black people. They tend to mate with your blonde haired, blue eyed. And I'm going somewhere with it. Remember I taught you guys, remember I taught you that prior to the Greeks stealing the pharaonic throne, the standard of worldwide beauty, you can go and read the ancient text, all across the planet was black. Black, black, black. And not just black, literally, the color of the Sudanese, pitch black. That was the worldwide standard of beauty, okay? There was an occasion, which I think happened in where you call Iran, okay? Uh-huh. The meaning, the proper pronunciation of the word Iran or ancient Persia is Aryan. I'm going somewhere. Okay. Where do we get Aryan from? The Aryans are the recessive genes of the blonde haired blue eyes. When they landed in what we call Persia or Iran, it's actually Aryan. When they landed, and I, they are not human. Let me stress that. They are the ones who began to topple the Dravidian civilization, which was a dominant civilization at the time. Does anyone know what color the Dravidians were? Okay, my brother, I want you um, I want you to go to Google Images. Okay. Okay. And I want you to type in Dravidian people. Weren't they blue black? Bingo. <laughs> like blue black, literally with a blue hue. This is where you get your Krishna. The original Krishna. Okay was not the color of Krishna you see today. He radiated the cosmic blue. This is why your pharaohs wore a specific color blue. They call it the royal blue. Okay? They radiated in the royal blue. There are two colors of the darkest black people. Okay? When they get really black, there's two colors they emit, their undertone. Green and blue. Blue and purple. Purple. I haven't, seen, I haven't seen the green one yet. This is where you get your royal purple and your royal blue. Mm. And this is why all of the gods prior to the white albino blonde head blue eyed Jesus, when you go deep into antiquity, they were, t- they were black, jet black. But when they radiated, they radiated a royal blue undertone, which is where you get your blue black people, or your purple black. 
when the Aryan or who you call the Iranian began their conquest of the planet, they began toppling all of these ancient black civilizations. And do you want to know what color the gods became? White. Bingo. That depiction of Cesare Borgia that you call Jesus, the origins of that, what I call white albino Nazi, goes back to your Aryan. You are worshipping Nazis when you have a white Jesus in your house and you don't realize it. It is deeper than Cesare Borgia. That is the Aryan recessive gene that the Vril and the Draco worship. It is the recessive genes of the blonde haired blue eyes. Uh -huh. Okay. Hmm. Did you find the pictures of the Dravidians? I, I did. I uh, no, I I couldn't find it. I just they're just pulling up these U.S. eagles. Oh no, America. Dravidian people. Type in Dravidian, D R A V I D I A N people, and go to images. Of course, they're gonna hide something like that, right? Yeah, Dravidian people. Or even look up like ancient Hin Hindu or something. That's it, that's it. Right? So all, even your Buddha, your Buddha was blue black. Your Krishna was blue black. Okay? This is where you get the royal blue and the royal purple. Before the Aryan toppled these Asian kingdoms and transform your Buddha and your Krishna to white. So you black people who have white Jesus in your house, you don't realize that you're worshiping a Nazi Aryan. It is deeper than Cesare Borgia. It is literally the Aryan archetype of the Aryan God, who are Dracos and Vril. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. But, um, what have you to say about the Naga people and the West African? The Naga? And Obatala. Obatala. Oh, okay. Obatala. Well, when I was a kid, this is what we practiced in Trinidad. But right. my family ended up converting to Christianity. So all of that I lost. But I still respect the African system. I still respect it. Mm -hmm. but I just don't practice. I use cosmic. I go with cosmic force. I don't align myself to any spiritual system. I go with cosmic, uh, cosmic force. That's what I align myself to. But, but do I, do, the... I do. I respect above and beyond the African spiritual systems more than any other spiritual system because they're the only one who gets it right. Right. So, what do you? But do you know about the Naga and how yeah, it ties into that? Yeah, the Nagas, the Negushti. That's right. And it, yeah, the, where you get in the east, your Naga, this is your pharaonic crowns, right? Right. Your pharaonic crowns. What's on, the, what's on the pharaonic crowns? The Nagas, what the Bible classifies as evil. But the thing with the serpent is the serpent is supposed to, the Nagas or your Negushti or your Negus, it represents the dual nature. Let's look at snake venom. The problem with the Bible is that the Bible is corrupt. It's a book of area. Okay, I'm going to lose a lot of black people, but I don't care. Uh, it's you know, a book of know, area. We, you know, we, we get into that all every day. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll be fine. Uh, we'll be all right. Okay, it's an Aryan book. Okay, you are worshiping an Aryan Nazi god. When you pick up that Bible, that's who you're worshiping. But that's for another day. Anyway. So your, nag your Nagas or your Negushti is what the Bible talks about in the Garden of Eden, that serpent. The issue with the Bible is that the Bible took the serpent to only mean evil. When in fact, when you look at what Moses held up, the bronze snake, your Asclepius, or in medicine, I forgot what it's called, the serpent wrapped around the pole. The original meaning behind the serpent, because there are actually... 
the reptilians, that's why I want Dinas to go visit Fredo Mutua before he passes. There are two types of reptilians, okay? They're the good reptilians who we can't find anywhere because what runs this planet is the evil one, okay? So when we look at the concept of the Nagas of the serpent, there's a double meaning. Remember the binary code where we get our technology? Right. Remember the fractal mathematics, African fractal mathematics? What's on the left must equate what's on the right. Right. When we look at the serpent, the serpent has something called venom. This is the secret of the serpent, the Nagash, where black people were originally called the Ingas, which is where you get the derivative in Latin, the Negro, which is where white area Nazis call black people nigger. Okay? Um, it, also, it also goes back to serpent king. That's one of the meanings, right? So when you look at the, the Nagas of the serpent, we all know that snakes are known for what? Their bite. And what comes out of the serpent can do two things, right? The serpent has what? Venom. And anti-venom. You got it. So what does the Bible do? The Bible takes one aspect of the naga, which is when the serpent bites you, the venom, you die. But then in the book of Moses, we see that he holds up the serpent on a pole. I forgot what it's called in medicine. The, um, the staff. The caduceus. The, the, the caduceus. Thank you. The caduceus. Okay. There's also the Asclepius, which is the serpent worship that they were practicing in the East. Okay. This is where you get your snake charmer. Okay. So there's a dual nature to the Naga. Okay. One is they bite you and it's deadly. The other is you can use the same venom and give life. Let me show you how they use Naga secrets today. This all goes back to the serpent. Technology, okay? Technology can be used to do what? You are in one city. Someone else is in another city. I'm in another city. We communicate. These are the secrets of the Nagas. That's right. Okay? Right. That's one form. You, I could talk to you via video or via voice call and you're one place, you're one place, and I'm one place. So this is one of the secrets of the Nagas. But the other secret of the Nagas is where you take the snake itself and the snake bites you and it's venom. Why, how do we see technology being used as venom from the Naga or the Negushti? Your spy state, your police state. Your big data monitoring, controlling people, using their, 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 their data that you collect to manipulate people's shopping habits. So we see that the serpent, these are all the secrets of the snake. What Pharaoh wore on his crown? What Krishna wore around his neck? When you look at Krishna, Krishna's hairstyle. And I'll show you some of the African hairstyles are designed after the reptilian, okay? But it's not the lizards that control this planet. That's your Draco and your Vril, okay? That Ethiopian hairstyle, the traditional Ethiopian hairstyle, that is a Draco signature. Not Draco, sorry. Ooh, not Draco. Naga. Naga. Not Draco. Naga, Naga. sorry. Yeah. Naga, okay? That is your Naga. Your Muslim women, when they wear the hijab and the Muslim men, when they wear their, their, their head covering with the double, you know, the double black circular things they put on it to keep it down, that is a symbol of the hooded snake. Right. May I know? So yeah, go ahead. Go. There are people in the chat who I, I was like, led up exactly to where I wanted it to because of the topic of the, the stream today. And um, there were a lot of people in the chat saying, you know, oh, we don't believe this woman and this, that, and the other. And my response has been, it's only because your mind is so limited, you cannot comprehend or accept that one of us can actually create an event. It's really not difficult at all. It takes the secret, go back to the Naga, let's go to Heru and the secret of manifestation. The secret to manifestation is the imagination 
and joy or feeling to bring into life. That's where they got the secret from. That's where they got the law of attraction from. This is why the, the ancient Egyptians, the Kemenks, were able to put hieroglyphs on the wall, right? And, and project now in the future. This is how they're able to make movies of things that don't exist, but it actually manifests and materializes now because they're using the power of the human psyche, you know, the mental stimulus, the imagination, and everybody talking about it and everybody putting their life energy into it to fuel the technology that is to come as well. So imagery, black people, once you can imagine something, you can create it. The key to that also is keeping your mouth shut, writing it down, visualizing, meditating, doing the detox baths like Renetta makes, like I make, like other, you can, you know, there's so many detox and just cleanse, keeping your colon and your system clean and empty. You know what I'm saying? And just, just, you can. So I really want to see my people stop doubting that because this is what has kept us back. It's, it's uh, more than oppression. It's like the mindset has been robbed. It's like a, a deep, deep cognitive dissonance. Some, some sister, uh, sister, I don't care yeah. if they don't believe me. I'm the one who's no, no, no. But I, it, not just you. I know you don't care, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm talking about you know for ourselves though. Like instead of using energy to doubt our people so much, go see what you can do. We're in need. We need to be building each other, building each other up knowing what we're made of and where we come where we come from should empower you or should be enough for you to you know what i'm saying so if you're going to embrace if you want to say oh i'm african oh african spirituality but then have a limiting mindset it kind of contradicts you know so it can wanna, be done i want to show you something. something most a lot of people on um a lot of people in the chat room i'm going to show you one of the ways how we in the caribbean stir up what they call in India the Kundalini, ah. which is your spine, your base spine, right? Means a yard, you know, some don't know where you're talking. Go on with yeah. it, go on with it, go. Sorry. You're whining. When whining. You look at the spine and the curvature of the spine, it looks like a what? It looks like a snake. Why That's do you right. think in Congo, and there's one of the symbols in Congo is the symbol of the snake? Why do you think they whine in Western Africa and they whine in the Caribbean? And when you're done whining, whining is a great way. Let's say, you know, you have you a lot of high. pent up. Yes, you know, you have a <laughs> lot of pent up sexual energy. Okay, because, you know, we absorb, we absorb sunlight. So we're always hot and always want to have sex. Okay, this is why they try so hard. Dinah, do you mind if I have this conversation? Yeah, of course. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. <laughs> I'm here for it. I'm here for it. Okay, cool. So you always wonder, like, white people are trying to crack the code of black people. How the hell can we've been trying to murder them for 400 years and they keep replicating? Right. Okay. We absorb that energy from the sun. This is why Bill Gates wants to block out the sun. But what's going to end up happening is white people are going to start dying faster when mm -hmm. he does. Okay. So let me show you one of the ways how black people have historically stirred up what they call that kundalini. It's whining. When you mm -hmm. open the base of the pelvis, you open the leg and the base of the pelvis and you sit and then you begin to rotate your base chakra. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's one of the ways how you can stir up. You can do two things with that. I'm, I, you know, I whine. So... And I was thinking about teaching. I wanted to teach black American women how to whine, but I'm afraid they're going to take it and turn it into something beyond ridiculous. We need to connect on that. You mean like city girls? Oh, God. No, 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 no. That's what they'll turn it into, but that's not whining, baby. That's not whining. All right. Okay, let me tell you about whining. So you're going back to your nagas, right? There's two things, and I'm not a master at it, but I think I'm okay. I can, I can put in some work, okay? So your whining video, right? So you open your leg like a real whiner, right? What does it do? It can do two things if you know how to master that energy, okay? You can literally, you know, and um, you can literally stir up someone else if they're having sexual problems. 
if you if you really know how to master that pent up energy in your base chakra or your pelvic area, and you really know how to whine, let's say some guy is having some 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 I don't know sexual problems, impotency. You can. Why you know does it have to be a guy that's having oh, sexual problems? Okay. Well, because women don't have penis, brother. But no, but I, let me show you. I, but let I, I, me, just, me I, show I just had to throw it out there. It draws, you it's know, okay. We, it's since okay. yesterday, I'm a yeah. teaser. That's what I do. I'm just saying. Okay. It's okay, brother. But you could also, if you're mastered whining, let's say, you know, it's a woman. Okay. It's a woman. I For me, I, I don't mind. I wouldn't mind. I don't mind whining on a woman. But let's say it's a woman and the woman has fertility problems. If you know how to whine, you can put the woman in front of you and you can whine on her and transfer that sexual energy to her. Okay? I mean, there's a lot you could do. Let's say you have a lot of sexual energy, okay? Like most of us black people, you know? I hope you guys don't mind me talking about this. Go ahead, go ahead. Of course not. Go ahead. We're, we're adults. We're adults. Okay, so, so let's say you have a lot of pent-up <laughs> sexual energy, but you don't want to have sex you're single and you don't have anyone, you can literally expel that sexual energy without having to masturbate, whining. Do you understand what I'm saying? And transmute it to yes. creativity. Oh, yes. So you could take that pent-up sexual energy and if you really know how to whine without having a lover or a boyfriend or a husband, you can transmute that energy. All of that is what the Indians call, you see, you're not going to accept it when it's black and it comes from us. But if I put right. the word Kundalini from India, right? Guys, yeah, why is the sudden. damn Indian population 1.3 billion people? Because they know how to white. Okay? Tantric sex and tantric yoga. Ah, there we go. Hello? Why is the <laughs> Chinese population, the Chinese can't wine? Eh? But the Chinese know how to stir up that Kundalini too. Why it is their population is, 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 is 1.2 billion? Why is it they've been trying to murder African people for 10,000 years and our population keeps going up? 60% of the planet. Bringing us, bringing us stuff like Ebola and HIV that yes. never existed in Africa. You know why? Watch how black people dance. It stirs up the fire of what the Indians call their Kundalini. That is your Negushti or your Negus or your Negushtan. And a master who knows how to really bring that energy, capture that energy in the pelvic area and release it can have all of you, you know. I have a secret. A, a good time. Hey, I'll leave it as that. <laughs> <laughs> I have a secret that I discovered. Um, well, I, I, I mean, I, I, it's not a secret that I, I didn't come up with it, but I mean, I just, I was, I, I'm very grateful to have discovered it for myself. I'm sure that millions of other people have too. I discovered... Dinas, you remember I was asking you about ayahuasca, if you know about ayahuasca was? And you said no, I said I was going to send oh, you some information. Ayahuasca. The, the, the tea drops, right? No, 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 no not that. That's, <laughs> we could talk about that you know, later. Yeah. But ayahuasca is, is um, it's plant medicine. It's, it's I, you know, in South America, Central America, aya, ayahuasca is said to be the vine of M Mother Earth. Right. I'll, I'll leave the science out for right now, but it's it's a healing plant medicine and it's it's a, a feminine plant. It's definitely the, the divine feminine energy at work. Um, it's a whole nother that could be a whole nother show. But um, a lot of people in the chat room I know know of ayahuasca. And then there's an African version, which is a lot more intense. It's called Iboga or Iboga. And they synthesize Iboga it. in Gabon. And Dennis and I actually spoke of it when right. Cameroon, one of the Cameroon, they, Cameroon, right. Cameroon, Cameroon, right? Well. North, north, south of Cameroon, uh, yeah. and in all Gabon, Iboga, right? Is yeah, they they've synthesized it here though, and they call God. it Ibogaine. Yeah, yeah. So they always find a way to take the spirit. I, I, Ibogaine, Ibogaine, yeah. They always find a way to take this the spirit out of it, you know, and and make it clinical. Um, but it's like, you know, a couple notches up from ayahuasca. It, it actually, and lately I'm finally, I'm glad that they're finally coming out with it because I know what I felt when I journeyed. I've had about five or six sessions with ayahuasca, but um, it rebuilds it, it. You know what they tell you, you have brain damage. It's permanent when you're 
when your neurons are dead and you the, the cell ending the, the nerve endings are dead, you know, the brain cells are dead. So you have white mass in certain parts of your brain, and they say it can never grow back. Well, Iboga is known to actually regenerate brain cells. And so is ayahuasca now, maybe at a slower rate or maybe just as, as high, but they finally um they finally um discovered that it could do that. And they, I don't know if they've managed yet, but for a long time, they were unable to synthesize ayahuasca. So that's what I like about ayahuasca. They, they've been trying to recreate that in the lab and they haven't been able to. Okay. She's fiercely, she, as in the mother spirit, is fiercely protective of hers with high healing. But what I discovered, my very, my very first journey, because it's a, it's a very shamanic experience, is that it raises your kundalini. The, my experience was orgasmic. And like when I was finished, a few people that were there because I needed it to be a very private thing for me because of my spiritual nature, you know, I'm mediumistic. And so if other people are around me, I'll start to serve their purpose rather than my own. You know what I mean, sis? So um, I realized though that once the medicine really took effect, I purged and everything. And all of a sudden I couldn't stop. My whole body was just, you know, like the whole time through and, and, and I remember hearing the shaman that was at the time saying, you know, he was like, yeah, that Naga <laughs> or, you know, like your Kundalini. Is what... Hold on, you guys. No, you come out. You, you come out. Excuse yourself. Okay. I'm sorry then. Sorry, you guys. Mom. So the, the, um, I, it was just like, and I kept feeling, it was orgasmic. It, I could really feel like I was having like very hard and I, forgive me you guys i'm not trying to be sexual this is very far oh, from sexual. Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. i'm not this is not it had nothing to do with sex i wasn't having orgasms in my in my you know sexual areas or anything like that it was up my spine i would feel it coming from the root all the way up right up up to the base the, you know the base of my my skull all the way up into my crown you know, I could feel because I'm super, super, super sensitive, but I could feel my pineal gland just going, you know, and it was like the I saw so much to but I, when I nobody told me about that. And I don't I mean, I don't know if it's an experience for everyone. I I do notice that when white people do yeah. ayahuasca, they seem to be like tormented, like like they just feel, I don't know, seems like they have the you know, it's like demons that don't want to let go of them or something. I don't know. But that wasn't the experience for me and a lot of other people that. I have actually facilitated for with ayahuasca. Can, um, I, can I tell you something? Yes. Can I tell you something? Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Sure. My name is Jean Claude. Uh, Hi, Jean Claude. Uh, mommy, 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 mommy. I'm sorry. Just like you. I got four too. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, I got four. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm lucky. Two of them are sleeping. Be blessed. Right yes. And then, and then the last one is still is still up. She just woke up. Anyway, um, so I was born in the Congo. And I grew up in, uh, part of my life I spent it in Gabon. Um, Iboga is used for initiation purposes. And also to recall Brother, not too much, spirits. not too much, not too much. No, I'm not giving, no, I'm not, I'm okay. not, I'm okay. not, I'm not, I know when to stop. Uh, right, that's why I didn't say, mention that part there, but yeah. But, mm -hmm. the, but just to say that this is uh, what it is used for. Um, the the what you express right now, what the, the the sentiments that you you felt can also be felt differently from other from other people. Um, anyway, the um, the Bantu tribe. I'm a Bantu. For anybody that's never seen one, this is what it looks like. <laughs> At least one of them. Okay, I'm a Bantu. Very proud of it. The word Bantu means the people. It comes from the word, uh, from the language, the Luba language, which I probably speak. And uh, it covers a lot of places in Africa. And the reason being, uh, Sister Jones actually mentioned it, is because uh, Bantu, Bantus travel south and north of Africa, so you can find us even in Morocco today. You're in Jamaica. And, 
in Jamaica, but that would be because of whatever they did to us. You know what no, I'm no, saying? No. But mm -hmm. even before that, or, or even, even before, before that. that, yeah, because I'm Caribbean. Remember? And, 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 and I understand that. And I understand that. You know, uh, with Mansa Musa and all the, the the tribes traveling throughout the oceans, people don't even realize that Africans didn't start traveling because of visas. Like we started traveling a long time ago. Trade we created, and merchants. We were trading with with other people in different places before that wasn't even cool. And today they look at Africa and they're like, oh, we're so proud. We are telling everybody how bad you guys look mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. without and showing uh, via the media the, the politics and the poverty of Africa. Mm -hmm. and, and then when South Africa all of a sudden organize, organizes the World Cup, and they're like, oh, Vuvuzelas. And then all of a sudden you have Vuvuzelas in America and people know what Vuvuzelas are. But we've had those ways of communicating from afar for so long. We had the telephone before the telephone came about. We could actually speak through drums to the next, the next people Talking and the drums. next people and the next people and the next people sending a message so that that message will actually be accurate rather than a uh, word-to-mouth situation where I tell you something and by the time you get to the hundredth person, that message is completely distorted. The message was accurate. I just wanted to come on and say hi and, you know, uh, say hi to Miss Jones. I was trying to give her a hard time yesterday. Mm -hmm. I guess she, she knows no, me I, to I, be I'm one of those. <laughs> she, I, I, I know she knows me to be one of those nowadays. And earlier, Dinah said, Jean-Claude is going to intervene. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm not. But, you know, I'm a fan. So every time I have a little bit of time, I, I make sure that I, I hop on or I listen to the show. Um, ladies, thank you for being who you are. In my language, when I greet people, we say betuabu. Betuabu means hello to all. So betuabu to y'all, ladies. Have a nice day. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Dennis. Thank you. Sorry, a great show. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And what we'll do, uh, we'll do, we'll have like our closing statements and close out. Uh, let's see, we'll start off with uh, Fafu Malau. Anything you want to share in closing? Right. Well, um, with that same Kundalini mm -hmm. rising that Renetta is talking about and me just talking about what the ayahuasca does and all of that, that is, I just wanted to say that it's a part of who we are and it is actually a major part of us creating and being a stronger people. And, um, you know, that that's a major part to overcoming and, you know, your mind being more powerful, whether it be to fight the enemy, whether it be to invent new things, whether it be for clearer vision, insight, for better direction in life. When you are able to bring your Kundalini up, then this is the, the Catholics know this, the Vatican know this. And this is where the, 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 the Cristo comes from. It was Jesu Cristo, which means, you know, and this is what they named Cristo oil from because they were talking about the oil. And this is why they perverted it and had little boys doing things beneath the waist that they weren't supposed to be doing so that they could have that Cristo rising. And they have been, they, they had this knowledge and they just did all kinds of evil things with it because it really didn't belong to them. And there's very seldom do they naturally know how to raise the Kundalini via whining and simple movement without even having sex because it's supposed to be a purely spiritual experience. And when you do have sex and it happens, well, yeah, that is an ex a, a, a spiritual experience too. But in that case, it should be, you have to know who you're doing that with. Um, otherwise you're just giving yourself away. But it, it, you people study how to get that Kundalini going, start whining. Renetta, our, I emailed you, you'll see, you already know what's up with my future. So if you gotta, you know, we gotta meet up somehow. We could, I, I would, I would do that here, there, anywhere. Um, 
forget what people think you know whoever's in tune and know that's their calling they'll come for it i think women do need to not not twerking so much but wine get in the mirror and wine is wine and and, and and cultivate that and it makes us better for our men too it brings us more because men can raise their kundalini too but as for women it puts us more in tune with our divine feminine self it sets our mind right you know as to how we're supposed to be living and creating and functioning and nurturing so i say women get back to that Men, thank you. Thank you. Um, and Shemo Dupwe, I be Adiwale. Thank you, Renetta. Thank you, um, Jean Claude. <laughs> before you go, before you go, uh, just a quick information they are actually already going the way we got uh to know about Iboga out here is because they went down there and actually experienced it for themselves. Where, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, they, that's what they always and they, do. And they take parts in all these ceremonies. They rape the place and bring it back. And exactly, yeah. that's yeah. the reason why they have that. Uh, Loki, this is one of mine. I'm sorry. Yeah, and they're only he using had, it for drug rehabilitation in clinics now, and it's yeah. He, it he works, had to. But, he felt yeah. like he had to be in the picture. I'm sorry. This is one of my twins. But <laughs> say hi, Papa. But just that, just so that you know, that's what they do. They come in and they take it from the roots, and then they go out there and experiment, and then mess it up. Right. Okay. So I'll tell you. Guys I just felt like I need oh. to do to say. But Miss Jones, go ahead, please. I'm sorry. No, no, no problem. Um, I'll tell you guys what they're really doing with iboga but that's not for this show so if dinos mm -hmm. never have me on i'll tell you what they're oh, doing oh, in the oh, United oh, that, that can be the next show that's fine you know scientology what scientology is doing with iboga okay oh uh, um, uh, oh that's a good show uh, yeah mm. that's still there here that's not for let, now. Let, let, let me okay let me let me just just a preview to the no. show no okay uh, are they are they brainwashing other scientology people with with it no, actually, yeah. what they're doing is because um, Hollywood has a lot of MK Ultra. Remember, I told you about MK Ultra and Super Soldiers. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. One of the ways they uh, they they program the MK Ultra, like the person who killed Nipsey Hussle, that was an MK Ultra Super Soldier. They fragment the brain. But what Iboga does is Iboga gets your neurons. OK, you, because when you have brain damage, what happens is the synapses in the brain are cut off left hemisphere from right hemisphere. Remember what I taught you guys? Guys, everything I taught you and I'm teaching you, the origins are in African fractal mathematics. If you want to understand every single thing they're doing today, both good and evil, understand African fractal mathematics and you will get it. What happens in the brain, and I'll keep it short, is that the neuro, the synapses in the brain get short-circuited with MK Ultra, where you're programming the super soldiers, okay? Or if they implant the person. What they do is when they administer the Iboga, this is some of them in Scientology, the D programmer. Okay, okay, okay. We got to do a separate show on that. We don't, you know. Okay. All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, so what I'll do is I'll just close out. And uh -huh. I'll close out by saying this. Women, learn to wine okay american woman when i'm whining when can you guys do you mind muting um muting the call hold on muting? one second okay. hold on one second hold on one second all right go ahead okay so because they destroyed like because sex in the west is so destroyed right and because mm -hmm. dancing in the West, every dance they take from black people, they turn it into garbage. We know this, right? Yeah. Um, twerking is not actually bad. I just don't like twerking when they're wearing hot shorts. That's just my thing. But anyway, so, you know, they, they really devolve the culture. They push it like down. So when I'm teaching, when I'm teaching black America, I can always tell a black American woman because when I teach them to whine, I immediately see their Christian programming take over them. They can't open their legs and they can't, they literally can't move their weight. And what is ironic about black American women is that a lot of them suffer from fibroids. Ah. So which tells you a lot of their pent up frustration, pent up anger, pent and up guilt. 
energy is down in that Bay Chakra. So when I teach, and I really wanted to teach Black American women to whine, but the reason why I don't want to do it is I don't want it to get hijacked. You see what I'm saying? And then they turn it into soft porn. But anyway, so I really want women, really, especially my Black American sisters, learn how to whine. It's the best thing you can do. If you want to keep your boyfriends and you want to keep your man, really study how to whine. Trust me, you can keep them. You, you can really keep them, you know? Really, like, really, like really, really keep That's them. That's Trini science. Just oh, yeah. Trini science. <laughs> oh, yeah. Trust me. Hey, hey. Okay. <laughs> so when you know, but I'm, I'm being serious. You know, I'm being, you know, you know, but I'm being serious. If you really want to learn how to keep your man, like, sexually really learn how to whine because you can really apply that this is the sexual part you can really apply it inside of your you know your bedroom okay if you want to be create men also men i mean i don't have to tell this to african men because when they start whining it's like oh yo yo <laughs> you know especially from the congo i'm like god help us all they they know the deal okay so you know but black American men, you're another group because a lot of you might be sexually frustrated. Learn how to whine for your sexual frustration. It also releases a lot of pent up pressure because it's a very pressurized society with a lot of oppression. It releases a lot of oppression because a lot of the oppression hides in the heart chakra and hides in the base chakra. When you want to learn how to control the fire, one second. You know, like you get a, a, a fire inside of you, you know? Sometimes, you know, you get this sexual or this passion, this fire inside of you, and you don't have someone to release it, or you don't have an outlet, whether it's art or creativity, to release it. Whining can help you. Or if you want to learn how to be, you know, if you want to have longevity, you know, longevity, you know, when you do whatever, Whining can help you. It's called, we call it stamina. You know what I'm talking about, sister? We call it stamina in the Caribbean. Stamina body. <laughs> yes. You know, when you, when you really master how to whine, you can build up a lot, of, a, a lot of stamina. And that stamina can help you when you're going through. I'm telling you about this. Sexual oily system. back. It helps you get an oily back. You understand? <laughs> you know, they say break up your back, you know? You understand? So yeah. when you, when you yeah. re really learn how to control the base of that naga, the base of the serpent, actually, meet the phone, guys, meet the phone. When you, you know, the base of the spine, it curves and it looks like a hooded cobra, okay? Which is actually, the base of the spine actually looks like the head of the serpent, okay? These are some more mysteries that they knew, okay? So when you really learn how to control the base of the spine, okay? And you can use whining, you could use your ayahuasca, you can use your iboga. I wouldn't subscribe doing too much iboga because it's too powerful. Right. But it can also help you build stamina, you know? So your stamina, you can use when you're having sex, but you can also use that stamina or discipline, is what they call it in the West, or, 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 or energy. Um, you could also use that, like when you're going through something, you know, and you don't, have, you don't know how you're going to get out of this. I'm telling you, I'm telling you some of the secrets, you know, uh, in, in some of these dances, because I do all these dances, you know. It helps you to really, when you're going through something, it helps you to go through the situation because it builds you up and gives you endurance. So please, my American sisters and brothers, learn how to whine. Your only problem is finding someone who can really whine because up to now, I can't find nobody who can whine yet. That's a problem. Okay. All right. Uh, Renata, so, how, how, Renata, how can uh, people get in contact with you? Yeah, sure. You can email me at G I Jane, J A N E, 0001 at gmail.com. And I also have a YouTube channel. It's Black Sunrise, uh, S O N R I S E. You can check me out on YouTube. We talk about all these things. We also talk about, you know, detoxing your sex organs. You know, if you want to, that's a whole other story. Anyway, so that's how you can reach me. Uh, perfect. Everyone, thank you so much for joining. Make sure you go to search for Huru on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, and Facebook. Like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, uh, a global black family. Peace.
Peace. Peace.